welcome back. Uh, in the last lecture, we presented uh, Hilbert Ackermann axiomatic system, and before that, we presented uh, one of the important axiomatic system that you will see it in Principia Mathematica. That is another axiomatic system which is due to Russell and Whitehead. In the Russell and Whitehead axiomatic system, what you will see is, is that uh, there is a choice of taking the primitive logical symbols. Russell and Whitehead took into consideration the negation and disjunction. Whereas Hilpert and Ackerman uh, took implication and negation as the primitive symbols. So in our, in the axiomatic propositional logic, our goal was this that uh, we have some kind of valid formulas, and then we are trying to come up with theorem. Uh, we are trying to come up with proofs of those theorems. So how you prove the theorems? Uh, you state the axioms explicitly, so they are absolutely true, and then we have a set of uh, transformation rules. Uh, which preserves the truth of a given formula and then you have a simple rule of inference that is the rule of detachment which is also called as modus ponens principle and using these three things uh, we transformed the axioms we trimmed these axioms in such a way that we derived minimal things such as law of identity law of excluded middle and law of contraposition etc. So now in this class uh, what I will be discussing is this that whether this Principia Mathematica or Hilbert Ackerman system, axiomatic system, are these consistent uh, in a sense that it is not the case that you derive both x and not x, uh, in that sense it is consistent, or these systems are said to be complete, are strongly complete, are weakly complete, etc. All these things which we will be talking about in some detail in this lecture. So, one of the important advantages of uh, knowing, uh, knowing these particular kinds of theorems is this that. Suppose if your axiomatic system is complete uh, in a sense that whatever uh, uh, what all you prove are valid and all valid formulas are also provable then uh, instead of checking uh, for example if you if your proof is very hard to come by then uh, you can use the completeness theorem uh, and then uh, you can use the completeness theorem and you can say that uh, you can show that instead of proving the theorem can simply show that a given well formed formula is valid. So that is one of the advantages of uh, having uh, this completeness theorem uh, in particular. So the outline of this talk is, is that is Principia Mathematica the one which we have presented in the last class is it consistent is it complete or uh, that means all or all axiomatic systems the one which we spoke uh, earlier are they free from contradictions that means within your given axiomatic system you should not be in a position to derive contradictions. So as we have seen earlier if you have contradictions if you start with the contradictions you can derive anything or from impossibilities you can derive anything. So that is why we have shown in the last few classes. So then we will be talking about the relationship between probability and validity. So that is what this completeness establishes. So if all the provable uh, things are also considered to be valid that means true tautology validity are one of the same in the propositional logic. So all the tautologies are obviously valid statements if whatever you have uh, you have come up with a proof of some theorem and then it so happened that it is also turned out to be valid. But is the case that all provable theorems in your axiomatic system are considered to be valid in the case of propositional logic this is the case all uh, what all you can prove. Uh, are obviously considered to be valid because each step of your proof is a result of applying either an axiom or a theorem which is obviously true or some kind of transformation rule which preserves the truth or the rule of detachment which also preserves the truth. So each step is considered to be true so the final step of your proof which is considered to be a theorem that is also considered to be true. So this consistency gives us guarantee against some kind of triviality results such as x and not x if you derive it it leads to some kind of trivialities whereas completeness guarantees some kind of adequacy you know. So if it makes your systems adequate so these are the two things which it does consistency guarantees that it ensures that there are no trivialities in your axiomatic system and completeness is it will give us guarantee of your formal guarantees adequacy of your formal system. 
So there are uh, first to start with uh, we will talk with uh, consistency, uh, consistency is the one which we have already uh, seen earlier. So whenever uh, we have for example uh, two groups of statements one and then suppose if you have another statement like uh, x implies y etc these are the two statements that we have. So these two statements are consistent to each other especially when uh, when you construct a tree for this one using semantic tableaux method at least some of the branches opens. So now you construct a tree for this one not x and y so this is the first one we checked it and then this is x y x and y so this branch closes but all the other branches opens that means this particular kind of assignment satisfies this particular kind of formula when when uh, not x is t and y is t then it satisfies this particular kind of formula whereas uh, in the, in the uh, when both x and y are takes a value t that also satisfies this particular kind of form. So using the semantic tableaux method one can find out when a group of formulas are said to be consistent if at least one branch is open then that means that is said to satisfy this particular kind of formulas now. So that means that makes these two formulas true. So it is in that sense we usually call it as consistency. So now there are three kinds of consistency one can talk about the first one is consistency with respect to the main logical operator negation. So what do we mean by consistency with respect to negation if a system any axiomatic system will be said to be consistent in the sense that if there is no thesis thesis means it can be an axiom it can be a theorem if there is no thesis x such that not x is also considered to be thesis if that is the case then uh, system is said to be called as consistency with respect to negation. So that is what we have seen on the board suppose if you have a formula like x and y and not y so for example this is these are the two groups of statements that we are taking into consideration. So now again if you construct a semantic tableaux method then x and y can be written in this sense and not y is like this means y and not y uh, there is a contradiction so it closes that means these two statements are uh, inconsistent to each other. So this is what we mean by consistency with respect to negation. So uh, it tells us that either you should be in a position to derive x or you should be in a position to derive not x but it should not be the case that both y and not y should be there in your uh, proof. So that means uh, either you should be in a position to derive only x or you should be in a position to derive not y but it should not be sorry not x but it should not be the case that x and not x if both x and not x you derive that system is called as a trivial kind of system. So uh, it is in that sense there is no thesis if you consider any formula well formed formula x uh, if you derive x and if you derive not x also then your system is considered to be trivial kind of system and that system is considered to be inconsistent inconsistency with respect to negation. So a system which is consistent with respect to negation is usually free from contradictions as you see here in this case you constructed you are checking whether this uh, these two formulas are consistent to each other um, in this one suppose if uh, you constructed a tree and then all the branches closes and all that means it leads to unsatisfiability unsatisfiability uh, leads to inconsistency but here it is not the case in the first in the first one that is not the case but in the second one you have this contradiction so all the branches closes. So consistency guarantees that there are no such kind of trivial things which are present in your axiomatic system triviality how triviality results in because you have x and not x. So it ensures us that uh, your system is free from contradictions. One of the problems with this contradiction is this that which we have seen already using classical logics you can derive anything for example if you start with uh, this particular kind of thing x and not x which is considered to be inconsistent then this is the first step and then you assume this one x and then not x now since x is true even x or y is also true why because so this is law of addition. 
So if x is already true our semantics allows us that x r not y is also true. So this we can add it here now this is law of addition. So this is already hypothesis or assumption or anything which you can take into consideration. So now 3 and 4 more exponents 3 to y uh, sorry this is not more exponent distinctive syllogism leads to y. So now from x and not x you can derive y but in the same way you can produce the same kind of proof and then you can derive even not y also so it is like this again you start with uh, x and not x then 2 you assume the same things x and not x they are all assumptions or hypothesis sometimes. So now on the fourth step since not x is already considered to be uh, sorry uh, x is already considered to be true then you can add any other strange kind of thing even not y also because this is already true this ensures the truth of the whole disjunction irrespective of whether not y is true or not y is false it does not matter because it is already true so this makes the whole disjunction true so this is law of addition. So here we have added y here we have added not y so then this leads to uh, so now uh, 3 and 4 disjunctive syllogism leads to not y so now in our system let us say you have set of formulas gamma and then you have taken one inconsistency that is the contradiction x and not x then you derived y and you have also came up with the same kind of rules etc and all you you have also come up with not y that means in your system you have x and not x. So this is nothing but a trivial kind of system a system in which both x and not x are proved is considered to be a trivial kind of system so this is what we mean by consistency with respect to negation so as far as possible your axiomatic system should be free from this contradictions like this so there is another way of defining consistency which you will find it in the literature logic literature so that is absolute consistency so what we mean by an absolute consistency a system is is said to be absolutely consistent if not every well formed formula of the system is a thesis so that this means that let us say that you have a formal axiomatic system and that there are so many well formed formulas and all so but not all well formed formulas are valid kind of statements whatever formula that you take into consideration it will not be a kind of valid kind of formula so that means it is not a true state so if it so happened that your system is said to be uh, your system is system is said to be absolutely consistent if if and only if there is uh, not every formula of, uh, of the system is considered to be a theorem or a tautology only selective kinds of things are considered to be either tautologies or axioms. So we started with some axioms and then we proved uh, some theorems in all that theorems are set of some kind of well formed formulas in all. So out of this uh, well formed formulas some are uh, tautologies some are contingent statements some are also considered to be contradictions in all so your set of well formed formulas are uh, big enough so in that only few uh, few formulas are considered to be valid formulas so if you can ensure that not any kind of thing is considered to be a, uh, a valid kind of statement or a thesis then your system is considered to be absolutely consistent that means you should ensure that the only statement that you have are only tautologies you know. uh, if the only statements that you have are only tautologies what about contradictions and contingent statements and you know. all if you if you had you had built your system in such a way that you allowed for only tautologies you know, it is not possible but if it so happened that if your system has only tautologies nothing else then that is not called as absolute consistency but you can build a such kind of system where you can come up with only there is no way in which you can uh, you can come up with uh, usually with a system in which your system is considered to be absolutely consistent because it is very difficult for us to construct only uh, it is difficult to visualize a system in which there are only tautologies it is not quite possible so your propositional logical system is usually considered to be absolutely consistent in the sense that 
not every well formed formula is considered to be a valid formula or a thesis. So third uh, there is this another kind of consistency which uh, uh, was discussed in, in greater length by uh, Emily Post another important logician this is also responsible for the truth tables uh, etc uh, following Wittgenstein. So according to Emily Post a system will be said to be consistent uh, in this sense if there is no thesis of the system which consists of a single propositional variable. So it is applicable only if the system contains some class of variables identifiable as at least propositional variables. So what happens here is, is that um, let us assume that you have constructed a grand axiomatic system um, uh, in that system if there is no thesis of the system which consists of uh, a single uh, kind of propositional variable if that is the case then also it is considered to be consistent. So you should ensure that you do not have this single uh, well formed formula that is P or Q or something like that which turns out to be a well uh, kind of uh, thesis thesis then uh, so that is not considered to be consistent in the sense of Emily post. So as far as possible you should avoid this particular kind of situation so that is a system will be said to be consistent in the sense that if there is no thesis of the system which consists of a single propositional variable so it is like uh, this uh, particular kind of thing so we can have this uh, these things at thesis and all like uh, we have seen in the Russell Whitehead axiomatic system etc p plus q plus b does not make any problem and all but if it so happen that only this particular kind of thing is considered to be a thesis in your system then your system is not considered to be consistent if this also is viewed as uh, this thing thesis then your system is considered to be inconsistent. So according to Emily Post we should ensure that these particular kind of formulas like P Q symbol single propositional variables should not be a part of your thesis what is thesis thesis is either axiom or a theorem. So it is in that sense your system is considered to be consistent. So now these are some of the important uh, theorems uh, uh, related to uh, the axiomatic system due to Russell Whitehead that is in Principia Mathematica. So the theorem number one tells us that if X is a thesis of uh, Principia Mathematica that is Russell Whitehead axiomatic system that means X is also considered to be valid. So how do we know that uh, this particular thing is uh, the case uh, x is a thesis means x can be either axiom or x can be uh, it, it, it is obtained by means of a, uh, applying some kind of transformation rule or it, we could have got this particular kind of thing through modus ponens and all. So if x is a thesis of uh, PM the Principia Mathematica x has to be valid. Uh, one example some examples which you can take into consideration so suppose x is considered to be thesis that is uh, it can be either axiom or it can be a theorem so now let us uh, consider uh, this particular kind of thing q r p this is uh, uh, permutation axiom in Russell Whitehead axiomatic system so now we have uh, a method with which we can check whether this particular formula is considered to be valid or not so that is the semantic tablox method suppose if you take this x as this one not x will be not of p or q implies q or p that it needs to be closed properly so now if you construct a tree for this particular kind of thing then this will become p or q and q or so now if you elaborate it a little bit then it will be not Q and not P and then uh, this if you simplify it you, it will you, will you will get this one and then P or Q needs to be written here so now you have not P here and P here this leads to contradiction and then not Q and Q is to contradiction. So what is that we have showed so we showed that not of X is unsatisfiable because if you take the negation of the given well formed formula which is usually considered to be an axiom in 
the cell weighted axiomatic system that is considered to be a thesis. So, if you negate that thesis, it leads to contradiction that means not of x is unsatisfiable, that means x has to be valid. So, now like this, any theorem that you can you can take into consideration and you can use semantic tablox method and you can establish the validity uh, of those given formulas. So it will have uh, the same thing will hold even for a for the case of a theorem. If anything is considered a theorem uh, in any axiomatic system, if you apply semantic tablox method, that means if you deny the well-formed formula not of x and construct a tree by using alpha beta rules, which we have seen in the case of semantic tablox method, then you will see that not of x is going to be unsatisfiable. If not x is unsatisfiable, x has to be valid. So that means you are not able to come up with a counter example in which you are like in the case of argument you are not able to come up with a counter example in which you have true premises and a false conclusion that means the original conclusion holds. So this is what we mean by saying that if x is a thesis of Principia Mathematica that is a Russell weighted axiomatic system that has to be valid because it is obviously tautology and then obviously all totalities are obviously valid. Now theorem number 2 tells us that Principia Mathematica is said to be consistent with respect to negation. So what is consistency with respect to negation a system will be said to be consistent in the sense that if there is no thesis x such that both x and not x is also part of your not x is also a thesis either x has to be thesis or not x has to be thesis that means x has to be a theorem or not x has to be a theorem but not both the things if that is the case then it is called as consistency with respect to negation. So how do we prove this thing so let us assume any kind of well formed formula x in, uh, in this axiomatic system then x and not x cannot be both valid that is obviously the case because it is a contradiction so obviously that x and not x is going to be false it cannot be true. So therefore theorem 4 which we will be talking about they cannot be both thesis of principia Russell weighted axiomatic system because combining both of these things leads to contradiction at least one of these things should be a thesis of that one either x has to be a thesis of your axiomatic system or not x has to be a thesis of your axiomatic system. So it is in that sense principia mathematic is consistent with respect to negation. So it is straightforward pretty straightforward that you will not be in a position to derive both x and not x so either x has to be part of your thesis or not x has to be part of the thesis but not definitely not both the things x and not x if you have x and not x if you allow for this particular kind of thing it leads to trivialities. So one can also show that Principia Mathematica that is Russell weighted axiomatic system is considered to be absolutely consistent. So what is absolutely consistent a system is said to be absolutely consistent if not every every formula of your system is considered to be a theorem or an axiom and all or valid kind of statement. If you ensure that whatever arbitrary formula that you take into consideration is not going to be a valid formula then the system is considered to be absolutely consistent that means it your system has other things as well that is contradictions and even contingent statements also. So when we discussed about a group of statements that you commonly that commonly occurs in the propositional logic we have seen that there are three kinds of statements which usually you will see in the propositional logic that is on the bottom we have contradictions on the, on the top it uh, tautologies occupies the topmost position. So statements which are always true and in between that there are some contingent kind of statements suppose if you can ensure that not every kind of formula that you take into consideration so how did we construct this every kind of formula so by using some kind of formation rules you construct a kind of well formed formula. So that does not mean that whatever formula that you come up with that is going to be a theorem and all so that is not the case in that sense it is called as absolutely consistent. So now we are trying to show that Russell weighted axiomatic system that is Principia Mathematica is absolutely consistent. So how do we show that uh, that is the case you select any axiom uh, whether it is A1 or uh, A2 or A3 
uh, suppose if you take even then not even is a well formed formula of uh, Principia Mathematica which uh, by theorem is not a thesis of Principia Mathematica. So therefore Principia Mathematica is considered to be absolutely consistent so what it essentially says is this particular kind of thing suppose if you take uh, any particular kind of uh, axiom q r uh, sorry q implies p r q so this is uh, axiom number two law of uh, addition so you take any such kind of uh, random axiom and all so what we what essentially we are trying to show is is that any formula that you are going to take you are going to take into consideration that is not that should not be considered as a theorem suppose if this is the formula that we have and I will take the negation of this particular kind of formula so this uh, this is already a thesis of uh, uh, thesis because it is already an axiom uh, thesis means as an axiom or theorem so now I take the negation of that one then I will show that this is not part of your axiomatic system so now if you take the negation of this one again using semantic tab blocks method you can clearly show that not of x is going to be unsatisfiable that means it is going to be an invalid formula so how, how it results so you take the you expand this you apply the tree method for this one then you will have this particular kind of thing then not p and not q since not q and q are there it closes that means not of x is unsatisfiable that means it is not a thesis of your axiomatic system what what we established any kind of thing which you pick it randomly that is not going to be a thesis of your axiomatic system that itself will be enough for us to show say that your system is considered to be absolutely consistent it ensures that not any kind of formula is going to be a theorem if that is the case then the system is obviously considered to be absolutely consistent so now Principia Mathematica is also uh, consistent in the sense of uh, Emily Post uh, so what is uh, what is considered to be uh, consistency according to the famous logician Emily Post it is like this a system will be said to be consistent in the sense of Emily Post if there is no thesis of the system which consists of only a single prepositional variable so you say that you know suppose if you have a q and you say that that is a thesis of your uh, axiomatic system if that means that system is not considered to be uh, consistent so if a propositional variable simple propositional variables also serve as a thesis and all then the system is not considered to be consistent so we can show that even this kind of consistency also holds for uh, this famous uh, axiomatic system so how do we show that let x be any well formed formula consisting of only sing single propositional variable that is let us say x one then a single propositional formula cannot be uh, valid or invalid you know. so if you if a statement is true we can only talk about truth of a propositional variable if uh, suppose if I say that this is a duster and the negation of that one is this is not a duster you know. but only you can talk about validity only when you combine with another kind of variable that is it is a duster or it is not a duster that is x or not x that is going to be valid it is a tautology but not a single propositional variable can be taken as a valid kind of state it will only be true or false so in that sense x is not considered to be valid and all in that sense anything which is not a well valid formula should not be a thesis of your axiomatic system so in that sense Principia Mathematica is said to be consistent even with respect to the consistency that Emily Post talks about that means in your axiomatic system there is no way in which you can have a single propositional variable as your thesis that is the axiom or uh, you only have that particular kind of thing so that is not permitted and all so if that is there then it is not consistent with respect to Emily Post so then now we, we just discussed uh, three kinds of consistencies and all so mostly we will uh, we will be using uh, consistency in the form with respect to negation that means any axiomatic system uh, uh, you should not be in a position to derive both x and not x if you derive it then it is considered to be a trivial kind of axiomatic system so consistency ensures that 
there are no contradictions in your system once you have contradictions you can prove anything you can prove x and you can prove not x and you can prove any other strange kind of propositions and all. So now let us move on to completeness so far we discussed about consistency and we showed that principia of mathematics is consistency with res consistent with respect to negation consistent with respect to absolute consistency and even consistent with respect to uh, whatever Emily Post talks about. So what do you mean by completeness for every valid well formed formula of a given axiomatic system is considered to be a thesis of your uh, axiomatic system. So now you have all the well formed formulas and all so they are all considered to be thesis of your axiomatic system that means either it should be a theorem or if it is not a theorem it has to be an axiom. So if that is the thing then it's, it shows that all the true formulas are uh, can be shown to be uh, provable so that means all valid formula should find a proof if that is the case then uh, it is usually it is called as completeness suppose if uh, if you say that all provable things are true then it is sound and then all the uh, true formulas are also find a proof if not today or tomorrow then it is considered to be complete so axiomatic basis is sufficient for the generation of a set of all its well formed formulas so we know that uh, uh, if you have some solid foundational uh, solid foundations based on axioms what are these axioms they are considered to be self evident truths which are obviously considered to be absolutely true so there itself is sufficient enough for us to say that since the axioms are absolutely true they are also considered to be well formed formulas you can use semantic tableaux method or any other decision procedure method and you can check uh, this particular kind of thing so usually in general axioms does not require any proof suppose if your axiomatic basis is sufficient for the generation of set of all its well formed formulas which is usually called as weakly complete if the axiomatic system cannot be made more powerful without inconsistency resulting then the system is called as weakly complete though in the first sense it is called as strong completeness and all uh, written in a wrong way here so an axiomatic just your axiomatic system is itself is sufficient for the generation of all the well formed formulas and all that means what, what essentially it means is, is that um, you have an axiomatic system which consists of some set of axioms and transformation rules and modus exponents etc that is all you need to generate all kinds of well formed formulas that exist either in any given field and either you are talking about arithmetic or geometry or anything all the truths of arithmetic and geometry should be should come as an outcome of just these axioms it is in that sense mathematics can be reduced to logic or you talk about all the mathematical concepts in terms of uh, the concepts of logic using only conjunction disjunction and some set of axioms etc so either it should be in that sense or your axiomatic system cannot be made more powerful like in the case of the first case which is considered to be strong completeness uh, without some kind of inconsistency resulting in the given system then that system is considered to be weakly complete so this is what we uh, what we mean by the difference uh, between what we mean by strong completeness and weak completeness so the first case is considered to be a strong completeness and the second one is considered to be weakly complete so now uh, we need to show that uh, principia mathematica is weakly complete uh, weakly complete in the sense that the second thing if the axiomatic system cannot be made more powerful without some kind of inconsistency resulting then the system is called as weakly complete so these are some of the theorems which uh, I will just go into the uh, I will just give you a brief idea of uh, this particular kinds of uh, theorems but uh, all the proofs are uh, already there in any uh, either in the book uh, uh, any any important book that you read it uh, in uh, in the formal logic so there are some references given at the end of this uh, these slides and all so in, the, in those books you will find proofs of all these theorems but uh, what, we, what we need to get is the central idea of central idea behind these theorems so this theorem tells us that if x is a valid well formed formula of a Principia Mathematica that is a Russell weighted axiomatic system then x has to be a thesis of Russell weighted axiomatic system or Principia Mathematica. 
so it is in that sense uh, PM is weakly complete. So now one corresponding uh, lemma based on this thing is this is this particular kind of thing. Every well-formed formula X of uh, Principia Mathematica has its corresponding conjunctive normal form, let us say X prime, such that this formula is equivalent to its X prime. So what essentially it says is is that uh, you have a thesis like uh, this uh, particular kind of thing. Let us say P implies uh, Q implies P. This is considered to be a thesis in uh, Russell Whitehead axiomatic system. So now this is the formula X. So now if something X is considered to be a thesis then it has its corresponding CNF. So what is CNF? It is conjunctions of disjunction. So where it is it's a conjunction what is a conjunction? Conjunction of disjunctions D1 or D2 and D3, uh, D3, D4 etc. So each conjunct is each conjunct consists of disjunctions set of disjunctions. So any given formula can be appropriately transformed into its corresponding conjunctive normal form. So that is what this particular kind of theorem tells us in the same way one can transform a given thesis into disjunctive normal formals. So there is the advantage of converting a given, of given formula into conjunctive and disjunctive normal forms it is quite simple. Suppose if you have a formula X is C1 and C2, C3 and on. If any one of these conjunct is false, irrespective of whether, for example, C1, C2, C3, C99, even if they are all true, the C hundredth one, so that particular kind of disjunct, I mean, in that, what are the elements? You have only disjunctions. If all the disjuncts are false, that makes the whole disjunct false and hence C hundredth one is false. So that makes even though 99 are true the hundredth one is false. So we have the semantics like this for and so this is A and B. So you have A and B T T F and F T F T F and it is going to be true only in this case when both the conjuncts are true then only it becomes true in all other cases it becomes false. So that is why even if you have in your, conjunct, in, your, in your conjunctive normal form let us say there are 100 kinds of conjuncts like this if 99 conjuncts are true but 100 conjunct is false that is C100 is false that makes the whole thing unsatisfiable and all that means this makes the whole formula false the, the conjunctive normal formula becomes false means it is unsatisfiable unsatisfiable means it is invalid. So uh, this is uh, this particular kind of lemma any given formula you can transform it into its corresponding conjunctive normal form. So in order to show that the above lemma holds all that is needed to show is that uh, we have sufficient kind of machinery that means uh, we have all the rules of uh, all the rules such as uh, double negation De Morgan laws etc and all then you can transform uh, any given formula into uh, its corresponding conjunctive normal form. Now lemma B tells us this thing. every well formed formula every valid well formed formula which appears in the conjunctive normal form, normal form is also considered to be a thesis of Principia Mathematica. So that means uh, so when a given formula is going to be uh, valid formula let us uh, assume that uh, you have a formula like this so this is C1, C2. C3 and all then only it will be said to be in conjunctive normal form where each C1 let us say it is like this P1 or not P2 or P3 and P2 I am selecting in a, in a, uh, in a clever way such that you know each disjunct will automatically be true P3 and not P3 and P2 or not P2 or P4 or P5 etc. So let us try to talk about only this thing. So now this is in C and F. So this is a conjunctive normal form conjunctions of disjunctions that is why it is in C and F. So what this the lemma tells us that any such kind of conjunctive normal form which is which holds and all that means 
you, you can clearly see here that a literal and its negation which appears in a given uh, formula. So th that means uh, this formula is obviously going to be true irrespective of whether P3 is true or not so this, this is going to be true now you have P3 and you have not P3 is absolutely true and whether P2 is false or P2 is true it does not matter it is going to make this true in the same way here you have P2 and you have not P2 here so that makes this whole formula true. So that means you have shown that each conjunct is true C1 is true C2 is true C3 is true so that is why the whole formula is also going to be true according to the semantics of conjunction. So it is in that sense any CNF which is considered to be valid should also be a thesis of your axiomatic system that is we are talking about Principia Mathematica so that is why it should be part of your axiomatic system. So we have uh, this particular kind of uh, thing which, which is related to the validity of uh, any given CNF formula so this, uh, this is like this a valid constituent disjunction in CNF in CNF what we have uh, each it is a conjunct which consists of disjunctions. So now if you observe the interior part of it that is the disjunctions of each conjunct uh, we have uh, only dyadic operators that is R is the usual sign which you will find which by use of uh, commutative and associative laws uh, can take this particular kind of form Y R P K R it is uh, a literal and its negation is there in a given formula so P K R not P K is always going to be true. So some kind of propositional variable P K and its corresponding negation is there in that then obviously it makes the whole, uh, the disjunct true and then C1 also true if each C1 C2 C3 all are true then your conjunctive normal form is also going to be true somehow your formula should be like Y R P K R not P K. So now in this case uh, uh, Y is considered to be this one and then all the other things are P K R not P K and here in this case Y is considered to be this formula and then this is considered to be P K R not P K etc. So like this each and every conjunct will have this particular kind of thing so that is why the given uh, CNF is considered to be a valid kind of formula. So the idea here is, is that in any given CNF you should ensure that you have a literal and its negation uh, present in the disjunctions of your each conjunct. So now one of the uh, another thing is, is that uh, PM is uh, that is a uh, principia mathematics is, is also considered to be uh, complete with respect to negation that we have talked about and absolutely uh, absolutely and in the even in the sense of Emily post also. So these are some of the theorems which we can talk about uh, with respect to Principia Mathematica and similar kind of things can be uh, we can do it with respect to even Hilbert Ackerman axiomatic system as well just I will quickly go into the details of uh, uh, whether or not Hilbert Ackerman axiomatic system is consistent complete and sound etc. So now we have uh, we presented our uh, axiomatic system uh, earlier in the last class so we are now saying that the Hilbert axiomatic system is considered to be sound so a system is said to be sound especially when you prove something that is A is provable and that means A has to be valid something you proved that whatever you have proved is considered to be a valid state. So this can be done uh, uh, by using I do not want to go into the details of uh, the proof and all but uh, uh, this proof can be done by means of some structural induction. So what we show here is, is that the axioms are considered to be obviously valid and all because you can check with the semantic tableaux method and you can check that all the axioms are going to be obviously valid because there is no way in which you deny the axiom and then you it leads to unsatisfiable uh, it leads to satisfiability and all. So all axioms are obviously considered to be valid and that if the premises of another thing important thing is, is that the other uh, rule that we have used is the modus ponens that is P P plus Q and Q so that means that also it should be uh, that rule also should be truth preserving. So now if the premises of your modus ponens that is P P plus Q are going to be true and obviously the conclusion also have to be true there is no way in which P P plus Q is absolutely true and then Q is false uh, Q is false so that makes the argument invalid but that is we cannot come up with a counter example which, uh, which can establish that modus ponens is wrong. 
so that also we can establish so we can take in the same way we can take any axiom into consideration and Helbert Ackerman axiomatic system like P in plus Q in plus P and then take the negation of that one obviously negation of this particular kind of thesis that is axiom number one leads to unsatisfiability unsatisfiability means not X is invalid that means X is considered to be valid or X has to be true. So like this you know you can check all the things that you have proved to be absolutely to be true. So it is in that sense whatever you proved that is single turn style A that is whatever is provable is also turn out to be true at the end of the day it also turned out to be true as you can see clearly you can use a common uh, you can uh, we can see from the proof itself what is considered to be a proof each step of your proof is obviously considered to be true so that is why the final step of your proof uh, that is a theorem which is obviously considered to be true so in that sense you can establish that uh, Hilbert Ackerman axiomatic system if something is provable in that axiomatic system that has to be true statement that is it has to be a valid formula. So now uh, we can uh, as far as axioms are concerned there is no way in which you can show that they are wrong and all they are absolutely true we can use semantic tablox method you can check all the axioms to be true there are three axioms which you can check them to be true using semantic tablox method which we have already or you can use any decision procedure method like truth table or anything then you can check the validity of a given formula or whatever you have uh, pro. Now the next thing which, uh, which is important is, is that we have used modus ponens also as one of the important uh, things in our axiomatic system so how do we know that that modus ponens is true so now suppose that modus ponens is not sound that means let us say p p and q it does not lead to q then there would be set of formulas like this particular kind of thing a a m plus b and b such that the first two a a m plus b are true but b is false so now since b is false uh, then there is an interpretation in which v such that v of b is going to be false that is what we mean by b is false so this is the way we write this particular kind of thing. Now since a and a implies b are obvious uh, already true for any interpretation in particular v uh, that same interpretation uh, we have uh, v a and v a implies b that is to be true. So from this we can deduce that uh, whenever you have v a equivalent to v a m plus b the valuation of a m plus b is true then valuation of b also have to be true there is no way in which valuation of b can be false because we know that the valuation of a m plus b is also true if it is false then it will valuation of a m plus b will become may become false so there is no way in which you can get a valuation of b to be false so we get only valuation of b to be true but we started with valuation of b to be false. So valuation of b is equal to t is in contradictory with valuation of b that is false that is that is what we began with. So it is contradicting our choice our choice what was our choice in the beginning valuation of b is false that means valuation of b should not be false but it should be t. So there is no way in which you can question the modus ponens in this way that is modus ponens rule is also considered to be uh, that is also truth preserving rule which is also considered to be sound. So that means you can prove the modus ponens rule but that also turned out to be a valid kind of formula it is truth preserving kind of formula. As far as completeness with respect to Hilbert Ackerman axiomatic system is concerned this is what we mean by completeness which we already discussed in the case of Principia Mathematica if we can discuss with one system and all then it is as good as the same as other systems as well. So Hilbert Ackerman system I think with this I will end it uh, Hilbert Ackerman system H is also considered to be complete in the sense that a valid formula is also provable. So this is the beautiful thing about uh, propositional logic that is all the provable things are obviously true that means soundness ensures that they are all true and all the valid formulas or true propositions are also provable if that is the case then uh, whenever uh, we can use these theorems in proving uh, in checking whether or not a given system is complete etc and all. Suppose if you are asked to prove a complex kind of uh, uh, statement and all proposition in the uh, complex well formed formula and all then instead of proving that thing using axiomatic system etc and all you can invoke the completeness property and assuming that you know propositional logic is considered to be complete if it is complete then uh, it is as good as checking the validity of a given formula rather than check uh, finding a proof sometimes proofs might be very difficult to come by so 
one can use one can employ semantic tab blocks method and you can check the validity of a given formula how do we check the validity of a given formula you negate the formula and look for the unsatisfiability if you can establish the unsatisfiability that means in you, if you construct a tree and all the branches closes then that is considered to be uh, not x is going to be unsatisfiable that means x has to be valid. So we have the following theorem that is uh, in, the, in the case of semantic tab blocks method if something is a valid statement if and only if uh, it, it is provable in the natural deduction system or another system which we actually did not discuss but uh, is more or less uh, similar uh, to natural deduction system as a Gengen's natural deduction system. So if something is valid that, has, that is also provable we, we know that that is the case in the case of natural deduction system. So A is considered to be valid if not A is unsatisfiable so if and only if there is uh, some kind of closed semantic tableau for not A and if and only if there is a proof of A either in natural deduction system or in the Gensen system. This is what we have already discussed. So that is indeed the case. So we have a correspondence between uh, uh, natural deduction system and of course this uh, Hilbert Ackermann system or even the Principia Mathematica. So any proof of uh, natural deduction system can be appropriately transformed into a proof in the uh, Hilbert Ackermann system. So if we can do that thing since whatever all the valid formulas are obviously provable in the case of natural deduction in the same way. Uh, we, we have a corresponding kind of proof in the Hilbert Ackermann system corresponding to the natural deduction proof uh, even that in that case also all the valid formulas are also provable even in this case that means Hilbert Ackermann system. So finally we can talk about uh, consistency with respect to Hilbert Ackermann system that is x is considered to be inconsistent if and only if for all a if a is, uh, a is deduced from x whatever be the case a is uh, deduced from that particular kind of thing then it is said to be inconsistent. So uh, it is we are talking about uh, in this case absolute consistency so the so proof can be like this you take any uh, arbitrary formula a b an arbitrary formula and since x is inconsistent for some kind of formula b we have both the things b is derived from x and not b is also derived from x. So we have another theorem such as this is a thing uh, we have a implies b implies a but instead of uh, a we substituted uh, we have already this particular kind of rule b implies not b implies a so now uh, this is like uh, this thing so what it essentially says is this that so let us assume that your system is uh, consistent not b and we already have a thesis uh, which is like this not b uh, b implies uh, uh, not b implies a b implies not b implies a so this is already a thesis of course you can check uh, whether it is valid or invalid so so now first time when you apply mode exponents on uh, these things 1 and uh, 3 you will get not b implies a so now you apply mode exponents again then you will get uh, not b and not b here so you get this thing so now how did you get this one 1 and 3 mode exponents and 2 and 4 mode exponents you will get this a so using mode exponents you will get a as a, uh, a single propositional variable as a thesis uh, so that if you can come across this particular kind of thing it is inconsistent in the sense of Emily post so that is what we have established it here the converse of this one is is that if uh, if a is deduced from uh, x then uh, that x is inconsistent that seems to be a little bit trivial so uh, so this is a one of the important corollaries of this one is this if x is uh, uh, consistent if and only if uh, for some a a is not a consequence of that particular kind of x so another important theorem is, is that if a is reduced from x even only if uh, x union if you add not a to it so that system is uh, that will become inconsistent. So with this I think uh, we have discussed uh, uh, all the important uh, uh, theorems and all uh, 
uh, there is a, another important uh, theorem which I will discuss it in the context of when I discuss about uh, predicate logic it is also considered to be one of the important uh, theorems that is what is called as compactness so the compactness tells us that in roughly I will talk about this thing so if let us say S be a countably infinite set of formulas x1 x2 x3 like that which are some kind of formulas and suppose that every finite subset of S is satisfiable then S is uh, going to be satisfiable so that means uh, for example uh, we have some kind of statements like uh, quickly I will end this one A or B A or not B and then A implies B uh, A implies B uh, B implies A etc. So now these are the four statements that we have so now the compactness property is one of the wonderful properties that uh, uh, that will happen in, in the case of classical logics that is the propositional logic so instead of checking all the statements to be consistent to each other so what you do here is, is that suppose if you take into consideration this is the set which consists of these three propositions 1 2 3 4 etc. So now the compactness property ensures that you take any two uh, any two statements and all if you can establish that these two are consistent to each other that is good enough to show that your uh, your whole set is considered to be consistent. So this is the finite set uh, suppose if you take single out only these two things 2 and 3 only so this is a subset of uh, let us say A and this is B, B is a subset of A if you can show by taking only 2 and 3 to be consistent then that is good enough to show that the whole set A is also considered to be consistent this is what we mean by compactness. So with this I think I will stop here so uh, what we discussed in this uh, lecture is simply like this that uh, we presented uh, Principia Mathematica and Hilbert Ackermann system in the last few classes now we questioned a uh, uh, couple of interesting questions they are like this is Principia Mathematica complete or is Principia Mathematica consistent etc or uh, uh, is it sound etc so now we showed that Principia Mathematica or Russell Whitehead axiomatic system or you take any axiomatic system into consideration Hilbert Ackermann or some other axiomatic system systems which follows so they are considered to be complete consistent and considered to be sound so one of the advantages of uh, having uh, your system complete uh, is this that uh, instead of checking a formula to be uh, instead of checking instead of providing a proof for a given formula you can check whether a given formula is considered to be valid because all the valid formulas according to the completeness theorem should find a proof so that simplifies our uh, uh, tasks in particular so in, in the sense that you know if your proofs are very hard to come by then you can check the validity of a given formula and say that so that uh, that will have a particular kind of proof. So in the next class uh, we will be talking about we will be entering into the third module of this course that is we will be talking about the predicate logic so I will be focusing my attention on the predicate logics which uh, the whatever proposition logics uh, uh, could not achieve so we try to fix some of the problems related to propositional logic by using the predicate logics.